MCP support inside of Visual Studio Code continues to iterate and be on the bleeding edge. There's a whole bunch of new things, including authentication, sampling, resources, and prompts that are available. Today, I want to show you the new authentication mechanism because it's absolutely delightful and is going to change how you integrate with MCP servers and develop them forever. All right, I'm here in the latest VS Code 1.101 with tons of MCP goodies. That's right. Agent coding flows now have support for prompts, resources, and sampling, which I'll talk about. A brand new authentication flow that makes setting up MCP servers super easy. And you can even debug and publish MCP servers directly from VS Code. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, you may be used to, for example, the tools inside of GitHub Copilot being readily available when you configure agent mode and or have additional MCP servers. So for example, here, I have my monkey MCP and the GitHub MCP, and it's listing all of the tools. So you can provide additional context to GitHub Copilot and the LLMs. Now, what's great is that MCP servers actually have a whole bunch of different support based on the spec from Anthropic and partners for doing other things like providing prompts and resources and even basically having the MCP server call and talk to the LLM as well with sampling. So prompts are really cool because prompt files can be inside of your repo, but also MCP servers can host them too. So I have my MCP JSON and we can see down here that I have my monkey MCP server and it says there's two tools and two prompts. And in fact, there are two prompts. We can see in the bottom right here, we have get monkey prompt and get monkeys prompt. What this enables MCP servers to do is provide prompts readily available, and you can even add prompts and customize prompts that are stored inside the MCP servers. So now if I say get monkeys prompt, it's going to give me like a hand created prompt based on the MCP server. So I could even call it different tools or things like that. What's really neat is that you can also just use the slash command and get a bunch of things. You can even pass in parameters. So for example, here I'm saying, what's the name of the monkey and here insert as text or run a command. So I can say baboon, for example, and then now it gives me the nice prompt. I can go ahead and run it. And what we'll see over here is that it's going to call my monkey MCP server, go and get my uh, baboon back and print it all out here for me, which is super duper cool. So that enables MCP servers to have prompts themselves. So if we go into the release notes and we go down, we can see that they actually created this really cool sample. Uh, over here, which is basically using the GistPad MCP server. They actually generate a prompt using AI, save it with the GIST server, and then they use it to generate a changelog entry. So it's first going to add prompt to the GistPad MCP server. And now you can use this make changelog prompt that is part of the MCP server, run the git command, and then provide text to then create the change log in markdown format, which is super duper cool to actually see that all happening there. Now, on top of that, MCP servers now can also provide resources. So this is pretty straightforward. So again, they have this GIST pad example here, but the GIST pad is basically going off. If I rewind this, we can see that it's asking it to summarize the content of the GIST and you can add context. And now you can add MCP resource context here as well. So this will automatically list a bunch of things. And again, you can have parameters for a specific GIST ID, or it can go ahead and list things back as well. So it can list out all the different items inside of here. So it's sort of the same thing is inside of my uh, monkey MCP server, I can say add context, MCP resources, and we see a bunch of things that are coming back from the GitHub MCP that I have, but also my monkey MCP too. So here I can go ahead and tap on that. And I could say baboon, for example, and now it's going to basically add this as a piece here. So I could say summarize this monkey. And now it's going to use that basically context coming directly from it. So it's not actually make a tool call at all. It's just using it as a resource as if you were to attach a file, for example. So that's super duper nifty. The last thing here is actually the MCP sampling support. And I'm not going to test this one, uh, but this one is an experimental form. So this basically enables MCP servers to make requests back to the model. It's super duper cool. But let's get back over to the MCP JSON. So you did see that I have my monkey MCP server that I've demoed here before with multiple tools and multiple prompts and now resources. Now, what's cool about this is that this is just a container that is being pulled down and run with Docker on my Mac here. Now, I also have the 
GitHub MCP server here. And up until yesterday or the day before, it was just another container that you pulled down, created a personal access token, pass it in as an input, and bingo, bango, you're good to go. But now uh, Visual Studio Code supports the latest authentication specification for using remote MCP servers. So what this now means is that I could actually go in and delete this MCP server from here and the inputs because I don't need them anymore. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the GitHub MCP server. And you're going to see there's many ways of configuring, including the new remote GitHub MCP server. And all you need to do is copy the URL. This is amazing. So here I'm just going to say add MCP server, HTTP. I'm going to go ahead and enter that URL. I'm going to say GitHub MCP. And now it's going to prompt me to authenticate with GitHub. Now, one of two things will happen. If you're already authenticated, or you've done this once before, it'll just do a nice little pop-up or it'll pop up github.com and go through that server flow. So I'm going to say allow. It's going to say, please select my account. So James Montemagno. And just like that, if I come back over, we should now see that I have 36 tools and there's my GitHub MCP all configured hundred percent. No more tokens, anything like that. Super just clutch right there. Now you'll also see that there are a bunch of MCP things like resetting cache tools, resetting trust, listing servers, browsing resources, everything like that readily available. You can even go over and you can manage trust servers for specific items as well. Now, in addition to this, you can also look at trusted extensions. And on top of that, you can also look at MCP and then you can look at manage trusted accounts right there. Uh, or you can also go in and you can go ahead and look at all of the different services here that you have running and you can even configure model access. So if you want that specific MCP server to have access to a specific model, you can have it there as well. Well, there you have it. That's just a sneak peek at looking at the brand new integration with authentication using the GitHub MCP server now available in the stable channel of Visual Studio Code. Go give it a try, install GitHub Copilot and start letting MCPs help you out in your agentic software development cycle. So until next time, I'm James. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.